Well, well, well. 3 1. Um, Orlando won 116 to 114. Overtime, tough game, good game, obviously. And, you know, there were many opportunities for both sides to win this one. I. I really don't like the people who say, oh, this could have been a sweep. Uh, Orlando could have won all four games. All four games in this series really could have gone either way. So I'm, I'm just going to leave it at that and say that all four games in this series could have gone either way. But as it turned out, Orlando has won three and Cleveland has won one. So it's 3-1 and, you know, that's that's the way it is. So tonight's game, you know, good game all around. Both teams, you know, had leads for portions of the game. Both teams had strong runs. Both teams had weak, um, you know, weak runs. And we got an overtime, and usually when you do get an overtime game, you can kind of tell that it's going to be good. Um, so wh wh where, do, where do we start? Orlando won. Um, you know, Superman. Over the last several weeks... As far as superstars go, you could not take much more heat than Superman has, Dwight Howard. So when he struggled in Game 5 of the Boston series, the talking heads and everybody was just on him. You know, talking about how, oh, he doesn't have an offensive game, he's um, clumsy around the hoop, and he came back, played well to close out the Boston series, and now he's been playing well in this series crescendoing in tonight 27 points 14 boards four dimes three blocks did not foul out he almost did but he didn't played 49 minutes seven of nine from the line he hit some big ones down the stretch too 10 of 16 from the field so he probably the MVP of this game <clears throat> and he's really proving that he is a franchise player he is really playing that part because Tonight, Turkaloo, his shot wasn't really there. I mean, he played well, 15 points, 7 boards, 8 dimes. But he did turn it over a lot, and his shot was not falling. Richard Lewis came on a little bit at the end, but he only had 17 points and wasn't really a factor until near the end when he started hitting a couple threes and hitting some free throws. So this was all about Dwight, although it would be a oversight to not mention... Alston doing his Michael Jordan impersonation early in the third. He caught fire. He was making it rain with threes and jumpers. There was a period of time where he was just hitting everything he took. He ended up making 6 of 12 from the behind the line. He played an excellent game, 26 points. And You know, Alston's really not that good of a player. He is very much up and down. But when he is up, it means a lot to this Orlando team. <coughs> Because there's no doubt that they miss um, J Jameer Nelson, so to get similar play out of their new point guard is significant. Petrus again came off the bench. He was by far the best bench player in this game. I, I would argue he was better than the entire Cavaliers bench combined, but yeah, I, I guess you could debate about that a little bit. But you know, he took a lot of threes, made five of eleven, ended up with 17 points. I, I didn't like the way Orlando closed out this game because they had a lead at the end of regulation and then their attempt to close out the game involved jacking up terrible threes. Terrible three, terrible three, terrible three. I, I didn't watch the game, but so I can't say beyond any shadow of a doubt that they were bad threes, but any three you take in that situation I think is a bad three. You're trying to close out a game. Drive to the hoop, get fouled, whatever. So, you know... That's that's pretty much it. I mean, Alston pretty much made up for the fact that Turkoglu and Rashard didn't really show up, and Howard took care of the rest. As for Cleveland, I don't really want to throw too much on a guy who had 44 points and 12 rebounds and 7 assists and a block and a steal and, you know, hit some threes, did well from the line, but it, it has to be said, you know, LeBron... You're going to look at his game and say he did well, but eight turnovers, that's not even bad. That's catastrophic. So it was like a Tony Romo game. Lots of production, lots of points, but a lot of turnovers. 
<clears throat> and if he can cut down on those turnovers by just a little bit, Cleveland can win this game. Uh, beyond that, Mo and Delonte didn't really step their game up. I mean, they weren't hitting threes, but they did get their points. Uh, I know that's kind of been the same thing I've been saying for quite a while now, but they did get their points. Mo had 18. Uh, largely because he did get to the free throw line, which is, you know, good for him. However, he has to get his points. Delonte played a solid game. He had 17. Ogalskis, I still wish he was getting more shot attempts. He did throw in a 12-9, and nine, which is great. But I, I feel like it's a good matchup for him. I think he should be taking more jumpers. Maybe you can get him into the flow of things. The Cleveland bench was, was better. De Daniel Gibson gave some quality minutes. Ben Wallace came in, grabbed some boards, and put in some dunks, but it, it just did not stack up with the Orlando bench, and really Michael Petris alone, and I don't know why Joe Smith didn't get minutes, maybe they're just not happy with how he's playing, but he seemed to have become the sixth man on this team, and he barely played tonight, so I don't know. You know, obviously Orlando caught fire from downtown, and that's where they made their killing in this game. They um, <coughs> they um, just were hitting their threes left and right, 45%. Um, Cleveland hit 27, so... I mean, that's the story of the game right there. Otherwise, this was a pretty, pretty evenly played game. I mean, even though LeBron did have eight turnovers, Orlando had more turnovers than Cleveland, so that wasn't where the game was won or lost, really. So, it's 3-1. The series might be over, but... Game 5 coming up on Thursday. I have to believe Cleveland will win that. I I, I, I could see the Magic kind of just sort of letting it happen too. So I'm pretty sure we're getting to a Game 6. And if we get to a Game 7, a Game 7 in the Quicken Loans, that could be game over for the Orlando Magic. So really, we're looking at Game 6. That's going to be it. Whoever wins that game is going to win that series. And... <coughs> You know, you're asking a lot of this Cleveland team to win three in a row. But I think it's capable of it. I think they're capable of just jumping on LeBron's back and he can just drop 50 on you and, you know, that kind of stuff. It can it can absolutely happen. But, um, you know, you have to take it one step at a time. If you're Cleveland, you have to think about game five first. have to take care of business there. And I feel like if they take care of business in game six, game seven will be theirs. They will have that at home in Quicken Loans, and I'm pretty positive they can win there, but it's going to be very tough for them to win Game 6, but I'm not counting anything out yet. Um, tomorrow, we have the Lakers playing the Nuggets in Game 5. I, I think the Lakers are going to win that one. I'll actually be able to watch this one. I will be home. Finally, one thing I want to say is today, me and Shango shot a NBA podcast, but uh, we had some technical difficulties. It only recorded from my end. You cannot see nor hear Shango, which uh, kind of sucked because we did have fun in the podcast talking about some stuff. I mean, we didn't solve world hunger or anything, but it was fun and it would have been cool for you guys to listen to it. But <clears throat> the only thing you can hear from Shango is I had to have my headphones on when we were shooting it. So there's like a buzzing coming from my headphones that you can kind of hear from my end. That's Shango talking, so... If you turn the volume up really high, if you get out your headphones, maybe you'll be able to make out what Shango says. And also, there's a really bad delay because Ustream was delaying us, like, uh, really nasty. So, it, it, it's kind of hard to listen to. It might be impossible. You can kind of sort of make out what Shango's saying with headphones and loud volume, but maybe it's not worth it. So, we're going to, you know, check out some new programs and equipment or whatever and shoot... We're going to try and do the next podcast on Friday. Hopefully we can get both ends this time, so it, it, it's definitely going to happen. We had fun doing it, and I think we're going to do it again on Friday. Assuming Cleveland wins for Game 5, Friday will be leading into Game 6 of Lakers Nuggets that night, and the following day we'll have the Magic Cavs Game 6, so that's going to be a big day because... We're going to have a 3-2 lead in both series, probably. In the LA series, it'll be definite, so it's going to be a big day, and we're going to just talk about it. So check that out if you want to, but it's not very good. So sorry. I'll see you later.